I would like to just in a short video explain the belts for the Mammoth all wheel drive and VZBot uh, toolhead. Um, my um, X axis is currently not mounted on the printer because I'm busy testing the SLM parts, but I can still show you um, how it needs to get mounted just by quickly looking at the, um, at the tool lid itself. Now, um, referencing uh, Simon's uh, videos that he made in the past with the, with the tool lid and the XY joiners, you will see that he uses a little part in more recent videos. Looks like this. So where you can actually take a belt, loop it through this, um, this section over here, and just loop it around. So you would have this in before. Loop it around. So it will look like that. And then you would just put it in. So and at the end result, it would look something like that. Okay, a little bit neater, of course, but something like that. Now, the reason I'm not using these on the Mammoth all-wheel drive by moving the, um, the Y rails to the inside of the gantry, we lose 20 millimeters on the X axis. So that, that is a given fact. Uh, that's nothing um, I can change about it. Um, if you want to use the setup, you will lose 20 millimeters on the x-axis. But now if we use these clips, um, the original clips, either in the front or in the back, we will lose even more. So you will lose about 40, 35 to 40 millimeters because they are hitting against this front idler. And if we use them at the back, they will hit against the, the back idler. So that is, that is the problem that I had to overcome to try and keep as much X travel as possible. So I had to rethink um, this idea of mounting the belt um, because we lose too much uh, travel on the X axis using these little clips. Now, in uh, videos, older videos from, um, from Simon Bess, from VZBot, he actually loops the belt through, then he uses a piece of filament, puts it back in again, so the filament is actually sitting here on the inside, so you would go like this, take a piece of filament, And as you can see, it's not such an easy task to do because the filament keeps on falling down. It's, um, so that's what it would look like. You would loop it in like that. And then you take your filament, put it in, pull on the belt. So to pull the filament in, and then you can just use a pair of clippers and just clip it off and this actually holds the belt in, in position so you can really pull on it and nothing really happens. It, it will stay in, in position. And this is actually the, the original um, thought how the belts need to get mounted in the front and not using these, um, these sliders over the belt. And I had a look at this and I thought, okay, well, this is definitely the best way to mount it because then we actually get the full, we can really move against the idler. So it's, it's not like before, so we can really get in close as possible. But yeah, this dropping out was just not a solution. So I threw it away. So keeping that in mind, the solution of, um, actually let's just put this belt the right way around. So it would actually go facing this way. So with that in mind, I then decided to make, I call them little anchors. Let's just call them little clips. So they are also um, like filament 1.8, so not 1.75, but 1.8 millimeters wide because that actually works quite well. And you can take these and slide your belt. So slide the belt over it. 
So it will look like that. And then you loop it over again and you put it in, same as the filament idea. So it would sit like that. This one broke. Let's take another one. These are the old ones I had in the printer. And these, if you print these, really print a few of them. Because every time I um, do something on the belt, I like to replace them. While they're installed, I don't have an issue. But normally if I take them out, then those little arms, <clears throat> sorry, those little arms like to, like to break off. So that's, that's what it looks like. So now you can wiggle it. It doesn't fall out. So same idea like the filament, but just something that stays in more permanently. And then you're just going to take this slide it in so it's going to look like that and i'll blend in a photo where it is actually mounted on the printer but that's what it's looking like and then if you pull on it it keeps it just keeps the belt in position so it's going to look something like that okay so this is the best way to mount the um, belt in the front that i found for the mammoth uh, 3d um, all-wheel drive because like this you can really travel all the way to the side, both sides, without having the disadvantage of these, again, these clips getting in the way and we're losing a travel on the, on, the, on the X axis. Okay, then you would run your belts through the all wheel drive system and then the belts are coming at the back. Now, if you also go back, We'll go have a look on the VisiBot uh, channel. Let's just spin this one around. So if you go on the VisiBot uh, channel, you will see that Simon, or this is not the original um, backplate. The original backplate, you would come with your belt, and then, because there are holes here, so you would loop through it, come around, loop it over, and then put one of these clips in again to clip it. Now, I personally have never been a fan of um, wrapping the belt around at the back. Uh, I've, I've just never been able to get, I don't want to even say same length belts. What about similar belts? I've, I've always been um, against it. I've, I've, I've never liked using it. So, and also with wrapping it around and having to use these, these kind of belt clips, again, we, the problem is at the back that you can't travel all the way to the, the back would then have this blocking the back so you can't travel uh, your full X axis. So I've been working on this quite a while already. It's, it's always been in, in testing, but now the final version is out and I call it a little parachute. So your tool there is getting a little parachute. So I put a little parachute uh, logo on there um, because it, it will sit there like that. So you have a little parachute at the back of your, of your tool lid. And the idea of this is, so when you come now around with your belt, just loop it through here. So you've run your belt through the, through the full all-wheel drive. So this guy is going to sit something like that. And now, before you run your belt, what I just do, I put the, the parachute on the back, and I use screws, and I just gently screw in at least one of them. So I can still lift this quite far up. Hope you can, guys can see that. So they, there's quite... So there's a distance. And then I can come with my belt that I've run through the all-wheel drive. And the belt is going to be facing upwards. I don't know if this part is the right way around. But in any case, let's just show. So it's going to go in like that. Okay. And the same for the other side. So the other side will then come in like that. So the belts will actually end up looking like this. Okay. And then I just 
tighten up one screw to start off with so that they, that they don't slip out anymore. So what I can do then is I can actually measure or count the teeth that I have in here because the same as in the front, I can actually count the, the teeth that I've, that I've locked into this um, in the front. And I normally use five to six teeth in the front to lock in. And if I do the same, running the belt through, I can get to the amount of teeth here. So my belts are very similar, if not the same length that I'm actually running in the gantry, which is, like I mentioned before, super difficult if I wrap the, the belt around. So now I can measure or count the amount of teeth I've got running on both sides, and um, then I can just screw it down. Now, when this is installed on the um, on the on the the gantry, so the full gantry and the belt are on. You don't need to super tighten this. So it's more important to get the length of the belt the same, so that we can say, okay, this is let's say 15 teeth. And on the other side, you've got 15 teeth. But if you then look at it, it can still be loose. It doesn't have to be tightened or, or tensioned. This part is not for tensioning. This part is the thought about it is just to be able to, to mount your belts. And you can then just lock them into position. So the end result will look like this when the parachute is then fully mounted. And you have enough space then as well for your CPAP. This is not getting in your CPAP way um, of the CPAP mounting and, um, and the pipe. So getting the same length of belt in. And also with this mounted, you get full travel. It's not gonna, it's not gonna block you on this uh, idler at the back. Again, this guy in the way, it, it just, it, didn't work for me. So this is where the parachute came in um, to mount the belts. And again, please, this is not for tensioning. You just give it a light tension. I mean, super light. So if you feel it's, it's a bit floppy still, <clears throat> you just pull it one more tooth and you tighten it. Check the distance. So the length of this or count the little teeth in it and try to get the same amount of teeth on the other side so that you know the belt is the same length and the same in the front. Take your time and really try to put five to six teeth on this side and on this side. So we can say to 99% the belts are the same length. This will help you later on tensioning the belts and getting the belts um, the same tension, which will also have an effect on your, your input shaper uh, print quality, it just makes it easier if the belts are the same length and you know they are. Nothing wrong with the original way, just like I said, this wrapping around of the belt was just not an option for me to use in any case, and it didn't work because of the travel. So uh, next, I'm going to um, show this on the, um, on the printer itself. So after we've, we've just mounted the belt and it's, it's quite loose, there's no tension on it, I will show you how to tension your belts and that you can start printing. We, we have all the belts now installed um, on the um, gantry. We've, we've connected it to the tool head. And like I mentioned before, don't tension it, just tighten it, but there's no need to tension it because the tensioning actually gets done here at the back. This is the tensioner that will tension your, your belt. So all the work will be done over here. Important before you start tensioning is to make sure that this part, this, um, this tensioner can move freely. Okay, so it's loose. And on the Y1, you want to move it all the way to the left. So it has to be facing in that direction all the way to the left. The top M3 screw and the bottom M3 screw have to be loose so that it can move as you, as you tension it. And the same has to be on the um, X1 motor, so they have to be loose. And the same process then goes with any bell tensioning on any 3D printer that you would start a little bit on the one side and you would start tensioning it 
and on the other side. And then you measure your, your tension and you come back and you give it that tension. So you give it that initial tension and you tension, tension on the other side. You just carry on with the process till you've reached your desire about tension um, that you are looking for. And then what I like to do is the idler, if it's face or positioned at the top, I tighten this M3 screw the first. So this one is the first one I would bolt down. And then the bottom one, if the idler is sitting at the bottom, like on X1, I would first tighten the bottom M3 screw and then the top one. That just helps because there is 0.05 millimeter play in it, but it will just bring the idler into its, its final position where it needs to be to run straight. So that's why top idler, top screw, bottom idler, bottom screw. First, you tighten them down. And also remember to, to move your, your, um, your x-axis forwards, backwards a few times when you tension your belts to make sure that you, that you have the right tension and the same tension on both belts that you're looking for. But all the tensioning gets done on the back X, uh, X1 and Y1 motor. If you have any questions or if things have still been unclear, please leave a comment um, in the comment section. I will then um, have a look at them, try and answer them as good as possible. And if needed, I'll make another video just to explain it even better if this was unclear. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.